Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us at the Rutgers Learning Conference 2020. Today, I want to discuss with you using tech in the classroom and how that goes beyond simply using the TPAC model and Assure model. This topic is more and more relevant today, given the current pandemic we are going through, where most courses across the country are now being taught online. So what specifically is the TPAC model? The TPAC model touches upon content knowledge, pedagogic, pedagogical knowledge, and technological knowledge. Content knowledge, as everyone knows, is the expertise in a specific content area where you're teaching specific subjects, possibly even specific subjects you also research about. Pedagogical knowledge is the ability to teach that specific content knowledge and how you teach that specific content area. Technological knowledge is, of course, how you influence technology within that course, how you use the technology, what you know about the technology. These combine to form the TPAC model. TPAC model, according to Kohler and Mishra, believes that the combination of these three different areas of knowledge help produce an effective educator. The technical, technical knowledge, technological knowledge as well, should only be used to enhance the classroom experience. It should focus on what is needed, goals, information for the course, and how it should be used. Focuses on achieving assessments, goals within a course. The Assure model is a tool that allows you to determine what type of characteristics your learners within the classroom have, how a certain tool focuses on object objectives, what materials can be associated with it, how you use those materials, what kind of response you want from your students, and then allows you an opportunity to evaluate how that process or method worked properly. The Assure model is more commonly used to create and develop, whereas the TPAC model focuses more on what specifically, what specific knowledge you may need in order to best use technology within your course. So theoretically, TPAC and the Assure model are just a good start for how you appropriately use technology within the classroom. Over the course of my dissertation, I decided to conduct research to determine what specifically or how effective educators are in using technology in the classroom, according to student interviews. In doing the literature review for this topic, it was found that technology is used by educators based on their familiarity and comfortableness with these specific software, the opportunity, how much availability it is, its cheapness associated with the technology, and whether or not there's professional development associated with this specific technology, which all makes sense. You want to use a technology you're familiar with, as if you're not familiar with it, you don't know it exists or how to use it. You may want a cheaper technology, especially if you're teaching in a larger class setting. It needs to be available to all the students as well as you. And if there's no professional development available with the specific technology, it may be difficult to use properly, effectively, and even answer many student issues that may come up throughout the course of using the technology. So why does technology fail within the classroom? Just because an educator is familiar with a specific technology tool does not necessarily mean that the students are familiar with the technology tool. 
there needs to be a way for students to actively engage in a technology to be able to become comfortable and effective in using it. Just because an educator feels that a technology is good does not necessarily mean it is effective and appropriate for the assessment within the classroom it is trying to assess. A common example of this is using a program to test one specific thing when that is not a objective or goal within a course. Just because it is easy to use does not necessarily mean that it is appropriate for the course either. For example, this past semester in spring 2020, I taught a course where it was management information systems. The course just randomly had a few simulations associated with Access and Excel, even though neither had anything to do with any of the course objectives or course content. This was a requirement of the course, which we'll touch on administrative standards later in this presentation. That also focuses on one of the other main reasons that technology fails. It may not match learning outcomes or course requirements. As I just mentioned the example, it had nothing to do with anything within the course, but it was required due to administrative standards. A poor choice in technology can lead to a poor experience for not only the students, but also the educators. The educators may have a poor experience in this matter due to students constantly complaining, having issues that need to be resolved, which only adds to the workload of the educator. So there are five important questions to ponder when choosing technology for a course. Why are we using this tool? What is the reason? Can we come up with at least one huge reason for why we're using the technology? Ideally, you want to come up with multiple reasons you're using the technology, but one good reason that you can explain thoroughly to anyone who may ask is a great starting point. The second question would be, how does this tool enhance and or supplement my classroom instruction? Is there really a reason you're using the technology within the class to help the students further learn, possibly test them on a certain assessment or outcome, or thoroughly enhance the content you're trying to teach? The third question is, how does this technology help address my needs as the educator? The fourth question, how do I address my students' needs? And finally, the fifth question, does my choice in technology meet administrative standards? This does not just tie to university policies and standards within a particular department or university. This goes much further than that to even specifications or just simply things that the department has done in the past. So why are we using this tool? Again, five common questions associated with this specific question. Is the technology appropriate for the content? For example, you may want to use the application Maple, the software Maple, within a calculus course. However, using Maple may not be appropriate at all for a human anatomy course, as an example. The second question under why are we using this tool? Is the, is the technology appropriate for the learner? Does the learner have the availability, the capability? Can they use this properly without having to inundate you with countless emails to help them get through this specific process? The next question, is the technology available to students? This semester in spring 2020, I had a situation where students were not able to purchase um, Wiley Plus from the university bookstore where I was teaching. This uh, only made matters worse during the pandemic when they were not honoring purchases from the bookstore and the students were scrambling. Luckily, the department chair provided these students with free access codes to the specific 
technology they needed to use. This needs to be considered. Is the technology available to students at all times? Is it online? Is it through the specific learning platform through the university? Can they be accessed remotely? I know in my experience during my doctoral program to use SPSS, I simply accessed it remotely through the university's website. Is the technology reliable? Can you count on the technology to assess what it's supposed to assess? Is it going to grade properly if it grades any specific assessments? Do students question the reliability of this technology? Do you have any issues with the reliability of the technology? And most importantly, is the technology safe? Will students use the technology and have issues going forward with their computer? Will you use the technology on your specific laptop or desktop at your university and have any petition issues with this technology? The next overarching question is how does this tool enhance and or supplement my classroom instruction? Is there a reason you're using this specific technology over another? It should be that it enhances the classroom experience. Does using this technology add anything to the course? Or are students simply just using it to deal with an assessment, address any outcome within the course? Or is there a specific reason it helps re-emphasize concepts within the course and examines them as well? Does using the technology benefit students? These days, students believe they know a lot about technology, social media, the internet. However, specific course room technologies may escape them. They may not understand why they're using a certain technology. Is it clear and obvious to them, even if they ask and you need to tell them, that there is a benefit associated with using this specific technology? Does using this technology re-emphasize or assess course concepts? That is a big area of usage for technology tools within a classroom. For example, in one course, I had to create a timeline using Dippity. It had absolutely nothing to do with any of the course outcomes, course content, course information. It was just something the instructor thought would be appropriate for doctoral students to do within a class. Ideally, from the student's perspective, it was more appropriate for maybe a elementary school or middle school level project, not a specific advanced graduate level course. And another important aspect of enhancing classroom instruction is, do these students agree? Do the students see the reason why this specific technology tool is used? Do they agree with your theory and your idea that this technology is assessing outcomes, information, re-emphasizing content within the course? Or do they not understand why? If they don't understand why, it's not clear to them, you may need to explain it to them. If they still are not on board with that specific answer, it may be necessary to reconsider, recollaborate, and possibly even change the technology tool you're using. Next is, how do I address my needs as an educator? Needs assessment is quite common within business practice, educational practice. So what course goals objectives does this tool help me address? Is this technology tool just a random addition to a course and just added concepts to the course that do not necessarily tie to the course? I mentioned specifically using Pearson My IT Lab with Excel and Access Simulations within a management information systems course. These uh, assessments, simulations, had absolutely nothing to do with the course objectives 
course content and course goals, but as an adjunct professor, I'm not in a position to make changes to standardized, compartmentalized pieces of a course, which we will touch on later in administrative standards. Does my course need an overhaul to implement this tool? In the previous example, course objectives and goals could be added to represent the necessary need of the Pearson Maya T Lab simulations to properly inform as to why they are being used within the course. If you have to completely overhaul and change an entire course just to rationalize using a technology tool, it is probably not most appropriate to use. Do I have the necessarily necessary tools, the tools needed, in order to implement this technology? With the current pandemic, most courses throughout the country are being taught online. So again, if they're using a specific tool, do they have remote access to this? I know at one university I taught at information technology courses required the usage of all Microsoft Office software, including Microsoft Access, despite the fact that 90% of the student body only used Macintosh laptops, which do not have access to Microsoft off, uh, Access on those laptops. They would always have to come to the campus and use the campus desktop computers in order to accurately and effectively complete those assignments associated with Microsoft Access. Does the university now offer remote access to the Microsoft Access program in order to allow students to complete these assignments? That needs to be considered too. Is there necessarily necessary tools? Do we need to modify what's going on due to online learning because students now do not have remote access to specific programs or technology tools they may need to use? And finally, is there training needed? One of the primary reasons educators tend to use a specific technology is due to their familiarity with it and the professional development associated. You may use a specific technology, for example, Google Classrooms, because you're familiar with it, you know quite a bit about it, and there's information online about it. But in order to truly be effective with it, you should know most of the aspects, if not all of the aspects, with what specifically you're trying to do with this specific tool within your classroom. Next, you need to consider how you address student needs. Do they need training? You may be an expert and be familiar with the specific technology tool, but do they need information and training related to the specific concept, technology tool, information? In a lot of cases, there will be certain representatives associated with specific technology that may be used. Pearson has a rep, Wiley Plus has a rep, etc. Or you may lean on them in order to help navigate students through specific technology they may not be associated with. However, in other cases, you may need to refer students to online information, YouTube videos, or you may even create these materials for them that you can purvey to them and limit the questions they may come up with later through the course. Is the technology accessible? I mentioned this semester at a university I taught management information systems. The university bookstore was having difficulty having the Wiley Plus access code throughout the semester. Once the pandemic started in mid-March and the university closed, to the public, the bookstore was not honoring purchases of students made online through the bookstore to get this access code. The access code, therefore, was assumed by students to not be accessible. I had to reach out to my department chair, who had to reach out to the Wiley Plus representative, who provided free access codes for these students. If this was not done, there would be no accessibility for these students they would not have been able to complete these simulations. Is the technology costly? I know specifically from using Pearson 
my IT lab, that the cost of this specific technology differs at every university I taught at where it's been required. There has been no uh, explanation as to why this is the case, but I have also seen this to be true at other universities. Rooktail Community College pays a different rate than Seton Hall University pays and pays a different rate than Rowan University pays. There's no specific uh, explanation from the Pearson reps as to why this is the case. It may just depend on what the specific technology is used for, how it's used, what it's used for. However, I found most students at multiple universities where I've taught at have explicitly expressed a frustration, if not outright uh, complaints, about the cost associated with Pearson My IT Lab as an example. Is there an alternative? In a lot of courses I've taught, I mentioned Pearson My IT Lab being used. There is an alternative. It puts more emphasis on the educator and how they're able to demonstrate and utilize Microsoft Office. However, as we will touch on momentarily, administrative standards often come into play and prevent this from happening. Is there value? Is there any value given to these students from using a specific technology? In a lot of cases, students will just use a technology simply because an instructor tells them to. In other cases, and I've often seen this on student assessments, evaluations at the end of the semester, they will voice their issues and complaints with any technology used within the course using that student evaluation at the end of the semester, expressing how using my IT lab was too expensive and the information in the course could have been taught without using my IT lab and similar situations. Students may only voice those issues within those teacher evaluations at the end of the semester. And the last overarching question is, does my choice in technology meet administrative standards? When I say administrative standards, I'm talking about everything from the university on down to your department chair. The first consideration is, are licenses needed for computers? When using Pearson My IT Lab in certain courses I've taught, that also requires using Microsoft Access. Access, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint within the classroom. Do students have access to these programs? At one university, they have desktop computers within their labs where there are licenses. Each computer has access to this. At another university, students are provided their own laptops and these programs are loaded onto these laptops. It depends on what the approach, policy, standard is from the university as to what the licenses are needed and how they're utilized. At the specific university where there were desktops with these licenses, students would have to acquire or somehow pay for these licenses on their own home laptops or desktops. This may limit their interest in actually using those technologies. Is the program in accordance with university standards? You don't want to utilize a program that goes against university standards. For example, Skype, some kind of chat function, a reminder tool may violate certain university standards. You need to be aware of these standards before you intend to implement a specific technology tool. Is support available for the technology, potentially beyond the university if needed? The university might be able to provide you with certain professional development on a technology tool. They may have a help desk for the students who need issues resolved with a certain technology. But is there also an outside source that is reliable that can be drawn upon to address any potential issues that come about? And lastly, is the company legitimate? Are you actually utilizing a technology tool that the company has a great Better Business Bureau rating, 
they're actually considered a standard within the field. What is their reputation? Why are you using this technology tool from this specific manufacturer, company, whatever it may be? Is their reputation good? For example, at this university I taught at, at in spring 2020, they utilize Blackboard LMS for their face-to-face -face courses and the Canvas LMS for their online courses. I thought this was odd, did not mention anything about this. However, for fall 2020, this university is now moving all of their course instruction to the Canvas LMS. This ties into the university standards as well. Does your technology fit with what your university is using? For example, Pearson MyIT Lab, you can have grades influenced, fluctuated into certain learning management systems, while it does not work to populate grades within other learning management systems. These standards also tie to what your specific department is using. At one university I have taught at, they first used Cengage SAM to assess student learning with respect to information technology. Then they moved to using Pearson MyIT Lab. Many students complained about the constant freezing with Cengage SAM. Ultimately, the change was made over to Pearson MyIT Lab. Students still complain about that university of the course cost associated with the technology, but it is still actively used. At another university, I was allowed the option to use Pearson MyIT Lab to teach information technology concepts or not use it. I chose not to use it. Students seem to understand the concepts just as well, if not better, through practice and demonstration of using those. Another instance, the university I mentioned, Spring 2020, use of Pearson MyIT Lab was limited to the simulation aspect of it not greater projects or quizzes, just the simulation aspect of it. So students only needed to use that program and not any other program associated with it, like Microsoft Office. Students were left confused and frustrated with how this played into the course because there were no concepts, learning objectives associated with it. Unfortunately, as an adjunct professor, this relies on the department chair and what their specific standards are. These courses are taught in multiple sections. All sections needed to remain the same and consistent with one another. So despite the student objectives, objections about the assessment not tying to any course objective, there was nothing I could do with respect to changing or modifying any of these technology tools used. This ties into administrative standards. A tool may not fit appropriately with the course, its objectives, its goals, its content, but however, the person who makes these decisions has chosen to use this tool and requires that all courses adhere to this standard. This ties into administrative standards as well. In closing, it is important to understand that technology in the classroom is not one size fits all. You may find a specific tool that works better than you, better for you within your classroom to help in assess the way you want a specific learning outcome assessed. You may have to go through appropriate channels to have this available to you, approved for your usage within the course. So, again, considering just your knowledge, technology-wise, pedagogically, content knowledge-wise, and what your learner characteristics are, how a technology associates with that, and how you evaluate the results, is not the end of the story. You need to consider much more, much bigger, much vaguer, and then consider smaller questions as well associated with them. Thank you so much for your time in listening to my presentation for the Rutgers Online Learning Conference 2020.